function may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words are for the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? The Mr. Fuddlestick Snowball continues to roll uphill and continues to grow as it sweeps out a wake of devastation through the heart of Renton's political machinery. The latest addition to the carnage is Renton Mayor Dennis Law. The question has been raised as to whether he is responsible in the end for allowing the witch hunt for Mr. Fuddlesticks to continue, absent his strenuous objection. Did Mayor Dennis Law actually have responsibility? On the one hand, I have to ask whether the mayor actually has direct control and therefore responsibility over either the police chief or the prosecutor. I believe the answer lies in just one place, which is duty. Mayor Law swore an oath to uphold the law and the interests of the townsfolk. The protection of the constitutional rights of the people of Renton is one of the paramount interests upon which he might be compelled to speak. As mayor, he is the steward of the public trust and he may be called upon to champion the causes of that trust. It is reasonably expected that he would do so without prompting. And so, if he were aware of the issue, he would be compelled by the obligation of duty to act upon the issue, which raises the question of whether he was aware of the issue. Doesn't the duty of the office carry with it an obligation to make himself aware of local issues? The videos themselves were posted within his easy reach, even after they were taken down, for them to be taken down as evidence of criminal intent copies of each video had to have been secured as evidence and were available to him. This was far too conspicuous as a news issue for him not to be aware of the issue. Could he have been unaware of his duty or unaware of his ability to take action in the matter? Dennis Law is the former owner and president of Puget Sound Publishing Company. He can be assumed, therefore, to be fluent both in the power of the word and the rights associated with the First Amendment. It is therefore safe to assume that he should have been aware of his ability to enter the arena of media outcry with an official statement condemning the chief's actions, whether or not his office was vested with the power to order the chief to cease or not. In order to believe that he didn't act based on ignorance of the case, one would either have to assume that he was illiterate, or that he had abdicated the duty to make himself aware of the local news generally, and the case specifically. He was not permitted the luxury of ignorance by the oath of duty he swore to his office. Since his former position as owner and president of his own publishing house implies that he should have had ample knowledge of his power to speak, and as he was duty-bound to speak by his oath, then I can only conclude that his silence is willful, and that his obligation to his duty to defend the interests of the people he swore to serve is derelict. As to those who seek a shoulder upon which to frame the yoke of responsibility, that falls to the voters for allowing this man to come into office. It will fall upon that same, same constituency to make the choice as to whether a man who failed in his sworn duty to, to defend their most basic human rights should be allowed to continue to represent them. If the voters in rent don't feel that the choices they were offered at the poll were sufficient, then it falls to the people to find among their own number someone of character to represent them. If none among the residents of Renton will stand up and be counted, and if none will rise to serve their fellows as the champion of their interests, then perhaps the people of Renton have the mayor they deserve. Well, certainly there are those who are more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror.